Uh, I forgot to start the music again, but that doesn't really matter for recording. I don't know. Maybe we'll keep okay. music off because I might get too distracted with music on and trying to listen to Dylan. We'll probably have to keep the music off for now. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have Dylan Mulroy on today to talk about Create Milan Jap. Uh, Dylan asked if I could lend a hand in uh, just making it actually good software. Um, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, I need, I um, need a guiding hand here <laughs> No, So, so anyway, uh, I, I actually, for, for those of you watching the, the VOD, uh, have a voice ban for five minutes, but, uh, so I'm going to let Dylan explain what create Melange app is, oh, and boy. then we'll, uh, <clears throat> We'll go from there and I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to go along with his audio cues for, for where I should go next as he, he leads the stream for five minutes. I can't, oh, I guess I need to pull up, I guess I need to pull up the actual stream so I can see what your screen is, even though there's going to be a delay here. You might be able to share your screen and guest star actually, because uh, Pedro and I did that. Try doing that. Uh, literally zero, Rond. I'm I'm never installing Emacs. What if I also just sat in silence for five minutes and we just had a silent five minutes? <laughs> Are you sharing your screen on Guest Star? Is that what you're working on right now? Give me a nod. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm not going to fold the Emacs round. Zero shot. I spent too much time getting proficient at NeoVim to use Emacs. Hey, hey, we can see, I can see the readme. Right, okay. So while Meta is uh, muted, thanks to Ron, uh, I'm pretty sure almost everyone in chat already knows uh, what Create Milan Jap is. But Create Milan Jap is a CLI tool to uh, quickly scaffold Melange projects, which Melange is a compiler that compiles OCaml and ReasonML to JavaScript. Um, Create Milan app is specifically geared towards uh, catering to JavaScript and TypeScript developers, um, letting them see the light of an actually good type system rather than TypeScript. Um, and yeah, it should, it's largely inspired by tools like Create T3 app and Create Lead app and Create React app. Um, yeah, you wanna scroll down a little bit, Meta? Uh, actually, can you link this in the chat? I might actually have this up in another tab. I got it. Boom. Beat him. I beat him. If anyone wants to follow along there. Oh, uh, yeah. So this just has some info. I gave a conference talk um, about two months ago on Melange um, and OCaml and ReasonML. So that's worth checking out also. Uh, it should be super easy to get started. With um, create Melange app, you should be able to just run npm create Melange dash app at latest. And just scaffold everything. It should go through the wizard, so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So Meta and hopefully some of y'all are gonna help me uh, rewrite create Melange app from uh, using Melange to using native OCaml. At the moment, it is built. Um, and it compiles the JavaScript with Melange, and we're using a UI library for terminal rendering called Ink. And Ink is this library that lets you write React components and renders it to the terminal. Um, when I first started Create Melange App, um, there wasn't a great story for making a really nice, delightful um, TUIs in OCaml, but that has since changed with 
uh, Mint T. So we're going to rewrite it to use Mint T. And yeah, so I figured during this stream that we could like kind of walk through the high level ideas that I currently have in Create Milan App and um, talk about how they might translate to native OCaml um, and kind of just go from there. I don't know how much more time you have till you can talk because I'm running out of content here. <laughs> One minute. All right, we're gonna we're just gonna you know sit in silence for a moment, just really take in the uh, the scenery of. Oh, uh, you guys can't see Meta's closet, can they? I'm gonna. Don't worry, guys. I'll take a screenshot and I'll post it in Discord so everyone can see his see his closet. Telling you, new meta cannon dropped. Here we go. It's gonna be in general. New meta cannon just dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Is Melange from the same team who made Reason ML? So Reason ML was originally made by uh, Jordan Walk. I'm not sure if that's how you say his last name or not. Jordan Walk worked at Meta slash Facebook. He's also the creator of React. Um, so Reason ML is simply an alternative syntax for OCaml uh, that looks more like JavaScript. Um, there was this other tool called BuckleScript. And BuckleScript came out of Bloomberg and then got a lot of collaboration from folks at Meta. And BuckleScript compiled ReasonML to JavaScript. And that's generally like when people think of ReasonML, they often think of like BuckleScript. Um, but they're two different things. ReasonML is literally just a um, alternative front end. Like you can mix and match ReasonML and OCaml in the same project and they all compile to the same native or the same JavaScript or the same bytecode. Um, so then um, BuckleScript, which was the original tool that compiled ReasonML to JavaScript, they rebranded to Rescript and wanted to take the tooling in a different direction. And they basically, um, they didn't want to be bound to the OKML tool chain and stuff like that. So they introduced new syntax, introduced new tooling. Um, Rescript is super awesome. Um, definitely worth checking out as well. So BuckleScript became Rescript, and then Melange is kind of like the reincarnation of what BuckleScript originally was, which is um, staying within the OCaml and ReasonML tool chain and compiling uh, those two languages to JavaScript. Hopefully that, that made sense. I think that was good. I can actually talk again, uh, but you were on a roll, so I just thought I'd let you, let you finish. Um, okay. Cool. So do you, do you think we should look at the project like on GitHub or in the editor or how, how would you like to kind of show me how this works? Uh, I would say that's your personal preference. <laughs> okay. I don't really mind either. Good deal. Um, here's what I'm thinking. I wonder if I can use, I'm going to stop sharing that to you for a second. I'm going to try starting OBS as a virtual cam and see if I can just do that. And then I don't have to think about switching windows that I'm sharing with you, et cetera. But I don't know if it'll let me do that while I'm streaming. It might, no, could not find virtual camera, whatever the F that means. Okay. Well, it was a nice idea. I still have um, no idea what an OBS virtual camera is. Yeah, I tried. I tried to explain it to you one time, but that's okay. Yeah, I don't listen. Yeah, I know. Especially I've noticed, you. I've noticed that about you. Okay, uh, let's let's just try doing this via via Emacs, and we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Sounds good. So. You should have, oh, fuck. I forgot about that. Um, I would have to restart. Oh, I never finished answering uh, Jack's whole question. He asked if it's from oh, the okay. same team. Go ahead. 
Um, I don't know if there's any original members uh, working on the launch that we're working on Reason. Um, I know there's one member on the team, his name's uh, Dave Sancho. Uh, he was super, super involved in Reason um, and he still is. Um, I don't know how early on he got involved with Reason, but he's um, on the core team for the launch at Ahrefs. Oh no, my my hoodie string went in my coffee. Oh, rough. Rip. Hard times. Um, yeah, so since I didn't actually have my browser's access to share enabled, all I can do is share browser sources. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so let me think. The delay for the stream is probably going to be too annoying. So I could actually, oh, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. Classic, classic me having issues with basically everything because I'm, I've really just come into my own as a millennial boomer at this point. I think that's really what it's come down to. Millennials doing a lot of heavy lifting in that phrase. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Okay. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. I was just going to share my screen with you on Discord, and I figured that might be easier. <laughs> Backhanded compliments from Dylan. <clears throat> it's all right. Justine's warned me about this sort of thing. It's true. It's true. <laughs> okay. Discord's loading. Um, I think I can go to you. I think I can just share my screen with you directly. Yo, Kyle, don't I'm you not. don't hate on special K. All right. It's basic, but it's good. All right. Kind of like me. Basic and good. <laughs> All right. Um, fuck. Are we really going to just start a video call on Discord as well, just so I can share my screen? Um, so here's what we could do. I could leave guest star. We, okay. You could call me on Discord, and you could add Discord as a application source in OBS. I could. Or we could just mute each other and not do our cameras on Discord, and then it wouldn't take as much bandwidth. But maybe it would still I, take I'm, a lot of bandwidth. I don't know. I'm down for whatever. Okay, let's just let's just try not me doing extra work. So I'm just going to call you on Discord, and then I'm going to try to share my screen. Now I see your phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really good. You had I had my cube cam just full screen for you. Um, all right, share your screen. I know how to do that. And let's let's go to Emacs and let's see how this goes. Let's just do like thirty. We don't we don't need an insane frame rate. Okay, it's gonna be okay, guys. This is very difficult backup apparently. All right, so you see my Emacs now? Okay, good deal. Now let me just uh, let me just do some things. Guys, this isn't that hard. I, it's my first time, okay? I'm a, I'm a guest star virgin, bad cop. Just give me a give me a break. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> oh no, did Dylan really go? Dylan is gone. What the hell? What just happened? What are you talking about? I'm right here. Oh, no, he's there. I'm just dumb. Hold on a second. It might help if I actually put Dylan on all of the uh, scenes in OBS. That might that might help something. Okay. Let me do that. Let me do this. Here he is. Oh, but then his effing voice is gone. God, this is really annoying. All right. Are you sure I'll have to do this better next go, time. Want me to jump off?
yeah, I could. But I mean, why not just do this a really dumb way instead? <laughs> Can they hear me now? I just unmuted myself on Discord. And now they're going to hear you. Twi no, I, ne I never imported Discord as a source. But now I hear you double. Oh. Okay, they can hear you now. I I added I added Brave yeah. as a source on my coding on Emacs scene. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Um wait, no, they can't hear you. No, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to change it again. I forgot. Your okay. your audio they needs to come through guest store. Yeah, you're back. You're back. We're so good at this. Okay. We're really good at this. I'm especially good at this, but it's mostly because I'm being lazy and it's making it actually harder than if I wasn't lazy, of course. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so you should see my Emacs and uh, we're just going to keep seeing Emacs as much as possible while Dylan's on stream. Uh, thanks for the follow, Josh Great. Walker. I appreciate it. And... Uh, I do not okay. endorse Emacs. <laughs> okay, so tell me, tell me what I should be looking at to start with. Uh, the best place to probably start um, would be in source uh, app dot re. Source app dot re. Okay. So this is the entry point of the application as far as I could understand it when I looked at this the other day. Yeah, so there's kind of technically two. Um, are you, do you have this pulled? This isn't the most recent code base. Oh, fuck, you yeah, pull. you're right. I have to pull, give me a second. Uh, there's not actually. Um, it kind of comes with the territory that you're just going to be kind of bad at at Emacs. Uh, no, I mean bad at Twitch if you use Emacs. What what the hell? Git pull origin. Okay, I'm getting there, guys. What? What? Oh, this is. You know what? Stop! Stop it! Stop it! All right. What do you, well, I have to say main. I have to do the whole effing thing because it's not set as upstream. It's really annoying. Okay, we're we're so back. Um, we're so back? Okay, yes, I see. <clears throat> okay. Um, so there's kind of two entry points to the application. One is this one, right? And this sets up, commander is basically like, um, literally just a command line argument parser type thing. Um, and it sets up like the shell or the API of the CLI tool. So like we can create um, commands that have arguments and actions, your typical thing. I think in OCaml, I'm not sure if Minty has something like this built in or if um, it uses command liner, which is like the native OCaml like command line library that most people use. Um, but for that, we're using Commander. Okay. Um, I just accidentally minimized this. So if you look in the same directory, there's going to be a cli.mjs uh -huh. alongside this file that okay. will import this. OK, so mjs, that's just, that's this new thing called module js something that didn't exa exist the last time I wrote JS eight years ago. Yeah, it's it's really <clears throat> annoying. It's a really dumb problem. It's okay, cool. There's like two module systems, common JS and then ECMAScript modules. And it's just, it's a mess for the ecosystem, but love it. I digress. Um, so this is what gets run when you run create Milan Jap. Um, from like MPX or BunX or like any of those tools. Okay. Um, if you were to look in the package JSON, you would see a uh, bin field that points at this file. And when I publish to NPM, it looks at the bin to mm. figure out like what to run. So that's how that works at a high level. 
And once okay. this is a native OCaml, this is going to point at our binary file that we create. Um, uh -huh. There's an open issue in the on Create Launch app right now, um, talking about how to do this correctly. Um, but it seems like we should be fine um, publishing like an actual OCaml binary. So that's how huh. that works. Um, so if you want to jump back to app.re. Okay. So right now, as the as the CLI stands, it has um, technically three commands, but two of them are the same. We have init and env check. And mm -hmm. if you were to invoke the command line um, without an argument, it will run init by default. Um, okay. So it's kind of three different um, three different commands, two of them being init, the other being env check. And actually under the covers, env uh, init runs env check first. Um, so if you wanted to, you could technically download the CLI and do like create melange app um, dat, or create melange app and then m check and uh, you would be able to um, check your system dependencies before ever running the whole command line. Got it. So, so that's the, the m next... check command here on uh, 19. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So let's see what else here. I don't think there's anything else super important in this particular file other than it being the root. Um, okay. Like I said, there's. I think we're going to end up using uh, command liner, you know, camel for this part of the app. Mm -hmm. um, so the main the main app, if you will, is like this action here that starts on line fourteen and ends up with this ink render, blah blah blah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Um, and like I said, so like the app is or like init. Like the actual app itself, if you did the full process, is kind of split into several stages. I don't really know what to call them. And mm -hmm. I don't know if these will be different views when we write in Minty or like how we want to exactly set that up yet architecturally. But we have, you run the app and it's going to first run the M check. So if you go into uh, init.component, um, sure. that should be a directory. Um... So in it component like this yeah. guy. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you were to jump down to the very bottom here, um, let's see. I can remember this capital G. No, that wasn't it. No, it was. I did so it. This I react it. component here. All right. Uh huh. This react component here is basically like the whole app, right? So okay. if you go up to the very beginning of this component right here. Okay. Um, Which I'm guessing you is. You can kind of see right there. It's is it this where the, yeah, where it becomes kind of fake HTML? <laughs> yes, where it becomes fake HTML. <laughs> so you'll, we have this box component, and then we're just going to switch on some state here. And uh -huh. I basically just like use switch statements um, to check whether we finished, successfully finished certain stages of the app. So like the first thing I check is like if you invoke create Melange app with a name, so you could say like create Melange app my app name, it will mm. pre-populate the name parameter. So okay, um, if if you give it a name and it's valid, uh -huh. it during the like the wizard phase or the the questions, it will not prompt you for the name. Like it will pre-fill it into the configuration struct we have. Um, Got it. So um, yeah, we do an initial check on the name. If it's like an invalid name, we just show an error, right? And then mm -hmm. if it's fine, we end up rendering the M check component. So if you jump into M check dot component, okay. Which I have, so uh, I think that's in a folder called M check. M check component. Okay, we're good. And this is a uh, uh, fun reason warnings that I get in Emacs currently, but that's fine. Here we go. Yeah, it's probably because like tree sitter grammars aren't good. Um, so this file here, uh, if you jump down to the bottom again. Uh -huh. And then scroll up a little bit. 
too much. Do you know React Meta? I mean, have I edited components because we really needed to get shit done sometimes? Sure. Like, I, did I go through a couple tutorials when I still, when it like first came out? Yeah, that's about that's about as much as I know of React. Okay. Well, so like, I, I understand things... the basic idea of like you pass state into your component or your parameters or whatever, and then you send the component back. I mean, that's that's as as dumb as I am about React right there. I mean, that's it's, it's pretty much close enough. Do you know how use effect works? Uh, no, I don't remember that. <clears throat> okay, well, when you see use effect, that's really the only thing you have to care about a lot when we're going through and translating this. Okay. Use effect is basically how I am running side effects um, from the React app. So like when we, mm. if you scroll up a little bit, yeah. you'll probably see um, a use effect in here. We lost we'll my do something game. fancy and we'll search for it. Um, so what's this use effect zero? Uh, chat's saying that they lost my webcam. What? Like completely gone? Oh, you did freeze. Weird. WTF. Weird. He's not frozen for me. So, you know, get right. wrecked, chat. Get, get, get wrecked, chat. <laughs> so that means right. he's just frozen in the browser source? That's so dumb. Fucking Twitch. Okay. Browser source settings. How about now? No, nah, it hasn't am changed. I, better? Did I, I even did see I it on my it? preview that like the browser source is not working. Give me a second to see if this works. If not, we'll just we'll just do the Discord thing, which is probably what we should have done to begin with. Um. Okay. Hold on one second. Where do you want your bread? Um, just out is fine. Oh. Daughter just got home. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna switch to Discord because this is stupid, and it doesn't make sense why okay. it's not working. All right, give me a second. Hold on, everybody. I'm hanging up on guest star. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Sorry, everybody, but that's okay. At least, at least I'm learning what is actually going to work. Yeah, I can hear you fine through Discord. Um, hold on, hold on. I muted myself. I bet there it is. Okay, sorry, I was muted on Discord. Um. Okay. I cannot see your webcam for some reason. Okay. Let me exit some shit. You're going to call me back? Okay, that's fine. Okay. So while he's doing that, uh, let's get Discord at least added to our sources in OBS. My computer is not happy about the resource usage at the moment. And that's what happens when you use an Intel-based MacBook. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it's just loading. Loading, loading. Uh, huh. That's weird. Dylan's having his own technical issues now. Um, good deal. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Import, import uh, Discord as a source. OBS is just like freezing. Is my, is my stream even up right now? I guess my stream is up. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. 
OBS is not even responding to me right now, which is a lot of fun. So that might have actually been the issue is that OBS is just like dying. All right, give me a second. Um, your stream might be up, who knows? <laughs> oh no, OBS just, it's so freezing. It's still not responding. What the hell? Okay, we might have to restart OBS. This is This is pretty bad. Um, okay. I'm going to start just sh closing random shit. My, there's really nothing too crazy except that the OBS helper GPU is taking 20 gigabytes of memory. And I, I think I only have 16. So that's a little confusing. Yeah. Don't know how that works. Um, odd. Hey guys. Okay. Let's see. Is OBS back? Okay. I can finally use OBS again. So hopefully our problems are over. Let me know in chat if things are still screwed up. I am going to at least import Dylan's audio. He's having some webcam issues. Oh, it could be my fault. Now I can't see you on discord. Amazing. All right. I guess I will, yeah, it's still just showing loading for me. Okay, sounds good. We're getting there. We're, we're so, we're so going to get there. Okay, I can see you now. All right, I can see you. I should be. Good deal. I can hear you. Um, all right, let me import this real quick. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather it be today than Sunday, at least. Eh, that's the way. It... Yeah, that's probably good. I don't really think I'm going to get any more value out of like trying to co-stream, co like stream our Knicks at night at the same time that you're streaming on your channel. I don't think that's really going to matter for me. Uh, right. No, I mean, I know you're not suggesting we do that. I'm actually just saying I don't think it's worth it for me to do that in any way. Yeah, fair. Okay. I know you guys can't hear Dylan. I'm getting him back in. Give me one second. Um, how does OBS work again? Does anybody remember? Okay. Discord. Okay. Looking great. Window capture. We're going to go with some... You guys are, I'm just going to completely show Dylan and I's super secret uh, Discord history. <laughs> and we'll go OK. And go ahead and talk, Dylan. Test, test. Yeah, that's looking good. You guys should be able to hear him. We just have to actually fix the fact that he's a giant. Okay, there, there, and well, let's see how this works. Oh, I see, but now I'm in this weird view. I need to change the view somehow. I don't know how any of this shit works. Okay. That's better. Now I just need to fix the fact that you're too small. <laughs> that is having technical difficulties. Oh, gosh. This is pretty funny. Oh, wait. No, that doesn't work. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's awkward. Let's just make Dylan smaller than me since I have like ego insecurity and he'll just be like super small on screen. All right. Just kidding. Okay. That quality is not bad. Bestie mod, you're here. Hey. He she said bestie mod, you're here. She can't hear me. You're through my headphones. All right. I would say in the interest of, let's see. Now I just have to check 730, 739. It's, it's woefully off, but I think it's good enough. Okay. Um, okay, that's bugging the shit out of me. Okay, go ahead and talk. Make sure chat's test, happy. Test, 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 test. All right, chat, chat. Does chat, that sound good to everybody? Chat, chat, chat. All right. Thanks. Thanks for responding. No one. Okay. <laughs> no. Thanks. All right. Let me just add them to the rest of these scenes, and we should be good. Um. All right. Sick. Okay. So I stopped sharing my screen. Let me try to do that again, and hopefully it doesn't. It's probably going to screw everything up on OBS again. Uh, but that's okay. Do, do, do. Share this 30. And hopefully that's not why everything's screwed up. But yeah, that did absolutely screw this up. So that's fun. And then that shows this. Can I just like hide this stupid preview? Because that's what I don't want. Ah, uh, so dumb. Okay, okay, we're almost there, guys. We're so close. Almost there. We're so close. We just have to find Dylan again. Where is he? Oh, there he is. There's Dylan. How about it? Everybody's like rage quitting. There's apparently a 15 second delay. <laughs> Yeah, right. You mean typical, typical Twitch latency? Yeah, I know. I was, I was mostly joking. I, I joke a lot about things and get mad at chat when I'm just mostly kidding. For the most part, kidding. Okay, so that looks good, but I know for a fact that it's going to be fucked up in the rest of them. So let me just fix this transform and. Hi. We'll be over our boomer issues, hopefully. Okay, let's pretend we're good. All right. Are um, we good? Yeah. I see me on stream. I see your code editor on stream. I see your code editor on Discord. I think we're pretty close to being ready. I, I think we might be just absolutely back again. Um, we're so back. Yeah, we're so back. My my time to render frame kind of sucks right now, so we might have some audio desync issues, but oh well. We're just doing the best we Yo can. Well. All right. Ship it. All right, dude. So we're at use effect, and you're saying yes. use effect is used to basically say uh, we have to like create a side effect in some way. How does, how does that work again? Yeah. Uh, so if you look at that code, um, that first one right there. So that use effect zero uh, line, 13 lines up. Yeah. This is basically saying when this component mounts or renders for the first time, we're going to set our loading state to true. Yeah. And then we're going to run core.engine.check dependencies. And we're going to wait okay. for that promise to resolve. Uh -huh. And when it does resolve, we're going to perform um, basically a you can perform side effects and perform, but uh, perform just returns a unit. Um, so okay. when we get our result from checking dependencies, we're going to switch on it. And if it's an error, we're going to set an error. If it's OK, we obviously set OK. And that okay. will kick off other things. So you'll see that we set dependency results to like some value down yeah. four lines. So that will kick off this next effect. Um, mm. 
couple down, lines down. If you look 20 lines down, there will be a, an array that has dependency results in it. Okay, yeah. So the way React's effect system works is you put uh, these things in these dependency arrays, and the effect will rerun every time that value changes. So when okay. uh, core.engine.check dependencies finishes on 26 lines up, and it yeah. sets the dependency result states from none to some, this effect yeah. below will run. So after we get our results, assuming that um, they're good, we yeah. will essentially call on mcheck, which is a callback passed to us from the parent component, like that main okay. init component we were looking at earlier. Right. So the flow is basically init starts, we render mcheck, mcheck mm -hmm. runs this core.engine check dependencies, that okay. resolves, and we bubble the result back up to the parent. So that's like the whole okay. flow of this. I have this pattern where anytime we need to do um, like file system access or we need to check dependencies or spawn a child process, it always goes through core.engine. It's basically like the main interface okay. uh, that um, we use to actually run the app. Um, and a bunch of this stuff in core.engine can probably be reused um, okay. as we translate over. Like this promise but, underscore result right here. Like that's well, that's good to go. So we're going to have to switch from, I actually don't know how uh, Riot um, handles async stuff. We might be okay. using um, OCaml's native promises, which uses LWT. Um, Oh, that's right. You actually These, do call anywhere you see promises, promises in, in here. I kind of forgot. We'll have to um, <clears throat> refactor all the promise code um, to hmm. whatever async mechanism we'll have. Um, okay. Just because these are just native, okay, our native JavaScript promises. Um, if you want to jump back to M check, yeah. Scroll down a little bit to the render or the JSX of this component. Look at that. Control E smooth scrolling. So good. All right. So you'll see on line 20 up a dependency results component. Uh, yeah. Which is at the top of this file, I believe. Right. Just want me to look at that. Dependency. Uh, yeah, so this module dependency results. Yeah, so this thing's messy and not great. But okay. a lot of this, I wrote knowing we were going to rewrite this, and uh -huh. I just like brute force through it. Um, this is going to get a list of uh, items that have a first-class module in it. Have you used any first-class modules in OCaml? No. Not really. I mean, I, I understand the concept for the most part, but okay. I haven't actually used them. Yeah. So our dependencies, which in our case, Create Melange app has three dependencies as it stands now, but it should only, uh, let's see here. No, we'll need all three. Yeah. So our dependencies are um, OPAM, which gives mm -hmm. us access to obviously OCaml and the OCaml tool chain. Node.js which lets us, you know, npm install and do all that noise. And then git will give a warning if it's not found. And I like I have no idea what system git wouldn't be available in, but uh, it will render a warning rather than catastrophically failing if okay. it's not on your system. Got it. Um, so those are our three dependencies. Um, what happened to your code editor? Uh, that's just what Emacs does sometimes. It's, it's like a special oh, okay. thing. It it helps you rem remember to just take a break. Like you don't need ah, to constantly work too much, and so Very good. it just goes blank screen every once in a while to remember. You know, give yourself a break. Go easy on yourself. All right. <laughs> so we basically iterate over this list of dependencies, and this first bit there, that's kind of a really messy switch statement. I'm literally mm -hmm. just sorting it so the modules 
if any dependencies failed, they're listed last. That's all that sort is. Um, and okay. then we render um, the dependency results out to the terminal. And generally, you'll see like uh, opam, pass, node.js, pass, git, pass. Um, yeah. So that's what this component is rendering. Okay. Um, probably not super important to jump into the dependency interface right now, but okay. Um, yeah, that's all this part is doing here. So if you scroll back down to where we were looking at that second use effect, um, mm -hmm. and it calls on env check and passes the results back up, we'll want to jump back up into the init component. So, like, just because it annoys my brain, like, why is what what is the whole use effect zero and use effect one? Is it really like use this effect after the other, or like what what is this? No. Okay. <laughs> So I was, I was uh, hoping that, that it wasn't, the but I just of, had to ask that question. All right. It is what? the amount of arguments that oh, will be in the dependency right. array. Right, because you don't have multi arity functions in OCaml, of course. Okay. So um, the first one is saying, like, hey, this effect has no dependencies, so we should only run it when the component mounts. Oh, yeah, right. Uh-huh. So that's how that works. Okay. Sounds and basically, so you use, said... use memo and... Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. Keep going. Uh, use memo and use callback are basically going to do the same thing with its dependency array and like the, um, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 being a uh, postfix to the name. Okay. It'll basically... Like, use memo is like, hey, this value... This function that generates this value should only rerun if the dependency updates. Yeah. Otherwise, we should maintain a static reference. Right. And I had to do that because um, I was getting a ton of uh, like glitching and re-rendering problems if I didn't memoize the hell out of everything. So basically, everything is memoized uh, here. Got it. Uh, um... Okay. Cool. So you said you wanted me to go to init again? Yeah, init slash component.re. Okay. So init component. Okay. So you'll see we pass in that on M check, uh, uh, like right yeah. where your cursor is. Yeah. Uh, if you jump to definition of the under or the snake case one, we can see what happens when that component actually or what that function actually does i doubt jump to definition is about to work right now because my lsp is totally not working for this particular project for some reason or with reason i think it's that's the problem is my lsp is not working yeah with reason reason um, um so on inv check yeah that'll that just exist? be up in this function uh right above where you're at a little bit okay do do do. I mean, is it just on inv check? Like, yep. Oh, there it is. Right there. So, so we we define this function. Not that I have to do. Hopefully, I'm not defining any new functions that I'm then using within the JS code. But you're defining this function with, like, uh, snake case. But then you have to use it with camel case. Is that right? Uh, you don't have to. I kind of just mixed and match it. Like it's conventional React components to use camel case. And right. Then, yeah. JS camel case. I like jumping back and forth between OCaml and ReasonML in this project, um, like messed with me a little bit at first, especially because yeah, totally. I didn't really use Reason until this. And the only reason, <laughs> but um, tis, uh, yeah, the good. only reason that I used Reason <laughs> was to get the native JSX um, for writing React. Okay. So um, when M check completes, we get a result. So that's the result that we saw in that bottom component. And then we switch on it. Right. And if it's a pass, we set a uh, this just like little arbitrary timeout um, mm -hmm. just so like the user sees that the step was successful. If I didn't do that timeout, um, basically it would just go away immediately. So I give mm -hmm. like close to a second for them to see the successful results. And then I set state um, that the M check was successful. 
Uh, this should prompt oh, right. Gitbang. So I saw this working. So important. you're just talking about like when you first start the CLI, <clears throat> it will show if you all if you have all of your dependencies, it shows you that you do for a second, and then that screen goes away, and you're you're on to exactly you know, your options. Okay, got it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, so once we get a successful, ideally, um, environment check, we set that it passed. So we set M check result to some pass, and mm. that's going to cause us to re-render the React component. And then down in the render function below with the React components, you'll see a switch on M check result. Um, and we will say if it's a sum value and it's pass, we're going to re render the wizard component. Okay. So that'll be down in the, uh, the JSX. Yeah, see, we're switching on M check result, configuration, and scaffold. So those are kind of like our three stages. Mm. Um, configuration is basically our wizard step, and then scaffold result means we basically successfully did the entire app. So if we have a successful M check result, but we don't yet have our configuration, we're going to mm. render the wizard component. And we pass okay. in the initial configuration, which will have whether it gets installed on the system. And if the user passed in a name for the app by default, it'll have like, um, it'll derive the project name and the project directory. So those are like the three things that will be on that initial configuration um, item. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if you want to step into wizard now. You're just trying to trying to make me mad by saying step in. Is it in this file or is it somewhere else? Uh, it's in his, it'll be in wizard.re. OK, so then. So here this is I have, yeah, so now we're going to get into like a pattern you're basically just going to see through the rest of the the react code where like i have a module for every single step that we do so i have a module which course or corresponds to a react component for name um and we'll render the name component if we don't get one passed in and if you scroll down a little bit you'll see like um syntax like right do you prefer reason ml or ocaml so mm. these all correspond to like each step in the in the actual right. wizard. Like when it's asking you the questions of how you want it to be configured. Yeah. Right. And each of these, there's a parent component at the bottom, which is like the the parent wizard component that renders all of these. So you'll see at the bottom like this big list of just like steps rendered in JSX. And in fact, I have a type for the steps right there. Okay. So here's your your union with all the steps and then here's your this is a little messy i could have done this better <laughs> i should have used like one object and uh done it more like the elm architecture but i ended up just using state for each of these and i, mean, I, uh, I kind of wrote the this problem i mean this is completely it's, readable it's, it's not too honestly. dense it's not it's yeah. not completely sending me into any sort of spiral all right um <laughs> so to keep it simple here each of the steps is going to have uh -huh. a state that is an option uh corresponding to it and then below this ugly block of react state there will mm -hmm. be a callback for each one and we send those okay. callbacks into the components we looked at above and when they complete we call that com uh we call that callback and set that step state from none to some and carry on to the next one. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I see that now. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically like all this is. That makes sense. So then when we're done with this, we've given create Milan Jap, the configuration we want. We Well, we did our dependency yep, so check. If you look We've at that, given it the configuration that, we want. And then 
go ahead. This um, this use effect right here that uh, fires when active step changes. Okay, right, with this big one that we're in right now, yeah. Yeah, so if you go up, that's a constructor for our configuration object. So this is mm -hmm. basically saying this effect fires every time active step changes, okay. um, but we only ever do anything if the step is complete, right? Like we just know up if it's any other step. When mm -hmm. it is the complete step, we call the on complete callback and we pass back up to the parent the configuration object. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted to go look at um, core slash configuration.ml, you can get a sense for like oh, what our actual configuration looks like. We're fine. And like this can probably, this will probably, a lot of this stuff in core. I'm really excited. Um, we'll be able to reuse, except for like where we shell out the child processes. We'll have to rewrite that, but um, we don't have to look at otherwise races. it's going to be pretty similar. Unnecessary. All right. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, let me um, just catch up on chat real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, those are all old chats, but I got a bunch of follows I forgot to thank you for. So, you know, Everyone that followed today, thank you. Uh, we have Nix, Good Elf, Austin the Dev, uh, Jesh Walker, Zero X Glitch Bite, nice, and Anchors, and Alexi Lisovi. I definitely screwed that up, but yeah, thanks so much for following and hanging out. Uh, I feel like you need to use Projectile Find File. No, I I could be I could use that if I want if I want to. Um, but you know, it, it, it can, it can be helpful for sure. Um, I guess like my personal preference for whatever reason, when I get used to a new code base is I like to understand the file tree because yeah. I will also, it will, uh, that was a chat by the way, that said I could use projectile find file, which is just, you know, a fuzzy finder for, uh, an Emacs. Um, but yeah, I like, I like to understand the tree as, as much as I can, uh, before I just fuzzy find everything. Okay. Uh, I forgot what I was supposed to do next. <laughs> uh, well, we're just looking at the configuration. So that type <laughs> okay. T is basically. This is our, our configuration type that we were just constructing using this make right here. Okay. Yep. And each of those fields um got fed back into that wizard parent component from callbacks from each of the step components and then when it's complete we take that object and we call the callback to the top level parent and then the wizard completes got it um i guess do you have any questions about the configuration object because this isn't going to change too much no i think it's pretty uh pretty obvious so one thing um we might have to switch as we migrate to native OCaml is that node package manager. I'm able to detect that oh. on my own. Um, so like when you invoke a um, node app yeah. um, with like MPX or BunX or PMPM DLX, it sets an environment variable and I'm basically just checking for that environment variable that's injected um, by those those tools, which we still might have that now that I think about it. We I'm could sure. check we it, might... but we could we wouldn't have this nice thing because I'm guessing this is something that is given to you by like Melange or something. Yeah, if you want to go to actually, you were just talking about looking at file directory structure, so maybe it's worth actually looking at the file tree. Do you have a file sure. tree? Yeah. So I usually just do this in my CLI, which I'm not sharing with you, but that's fine. Um, I don't have a nice file tree in Emacs on purpose because I just never use it. Uh, let's see if we do. I don't want build. I always forget how to how to. Oh, yeah, I just want a tree on source. Um, yeah, your source directory is so effing big. All right. Here's what I'll do. I'll just switch. I know, I know, 
I know his uh, face went away for you guys, but I just have to switch what I'm I'm sharing with him real quick. And it's good enough. Go live. And Dylan's face is back. And okay. So let's just start with an LS on source. Um, uh, I don't let me. Also see record again. Yeah, hold on. I guess I'll. I guess I'll move your. I guess that makes sense on a terminal scene that you can't cover the terminal. That doesn't. That doesn't do well for everybody. All right, <laughs> we'll put you up there for now. Um, let me lock that up okay here we go so this is our our source directory um uh i can't see anything you can't see anything? all i see is your face what oh what? wait hold on it's there i i can now i can now uh, it wasn't me this time we're good most likely yeah yeah i mean it was you but it's fine um <laughs> so Looking at this directory here, uh, M check corresponds to one of our commands, init corresponds to one of our commands from the CLI, and right. though both of those have the commander uh, code for setting up like the actual command line parsing, and then also the React components. Okay. Um, common is kind of um, like I would call that tech debt. The only thing that's really important in there is some like let bindings and custom syntax operators. Honestly, okay. that could probably get moved into core. Um, and the banner is under common. So that like, um, like I don't even think I'm using prefix.re anymore, anywhere anymore. Okay. But the banner.re is the component that renders like that um, gradient uh, ASCII task. I can't even say it. ASCII. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So then um, the bulk of the logic is going to live under core. Um, okay. So if I knew how to type, and I, I, I keep wanting to type score, and I keep forgetting to prefix it. OK. <clears throat> so in here, the really important ones are going to be um, engine, which is like the, um, the, the module that the outside world interacts with to mm. control the system, right? Like that's basically like the public interface, if you will, for interacting with scaffolding and doing the wizard checks and all that stuff. Like everything happens in engine. Engine calls out <laughs> to the other modules in this folder. Um, uh, what's important in here? So right now, probably process is an important file we should look at. Um, okay. So process is like this interface that um, I mean we can keep looking at the file tree too if you want to just we'll we'll go wait. really really cool here and uh, we'll just load up Vi in our our terminal here. Okay. So this is literally all the processes. It has an input and output. It has a name which honestly could just be renamed to command. Uh -huh. Um, but, and then we have an exec component, which takes an input and returns a result. That's a promise, um, which is the same result type, just wrapped in a promise, yeah. um, of the output and the string. So when we shell out to, uh, the file system, the file system will, um, I love that that maybe give the thumbs up there. Um, am I frozen? You are frozen. <laughs> You're frozen for me too. Well, Apple just <laughs> Apple just dropped the ball and choked so hard. Hold on. <laughs> I'm joking pretty hard. I, it's not I can't, actually I my can't. my frame drop rate isn't so bad anymore. It it was it, okay. You came back. You're back. Okay, we're good. Hilarious. That's so funny. Um, I real like. I'm really going to need to I somebody's going to have to buy me a new computer. That's all I know. Um anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um I don't remember what I was saying, but um 
anytime we do anything asynchronous or shelling out to another process, uh -huh. we have some module that implements this interface right here or this module okay. type. Got it. So if you were to look at like, what would be an easy one to look at here? Uh, maybe NPM would be an easy one. Okay. In here. All right. Um... Yep. So you, you can see up top, we have like this command called install, right? Yeah. And I'm saying install is, uh, or it satisfies the process dot S signature with the type of input being string and the output being string. Um, and yeah, I basically just implement that whole thing in here. If you scroll down, there will be an exec function. Okay. So the exec okay. function is going to take input, which is a string, which will be the oh. project directory name. And then we literally just spawn off a child process calling yeah. um, npm install. And we wait until it's finished. And when it's finished, we resolve it back up. If it's an error, we map it to that error message that you see above. That's going to be the same exact pattern for every single process. And we should be able to like maintain this interface or type at least for the initial refactor, just by swapping out like those lines from like the exact function really, right? Like rather than yeah. using Node.js to shell yeah. out, we're going to use whatever OCaml system module does. Or right. I, I don't know what the exact module or API is, but you get the point. Yeah. Um, the biggest pain in the ass is going to be refactoring from using promises to whatever asynchronous model that um, Riot uses, but uh -huh. we're just going to have to bite that bullet. <laughs> right, totally. Um, um... The other, another important thing to potentially look at in here is that dependency. So this is kind of another like interface type um, module type. Mm -hmm. So we have the concept of dependencies and processes. So dependencies are going to be what I talked about earlier. We have three of them. We have OPAM, we have Git, we have Node. And the signature for a dependency is basically that top thing. It has to have a function called check, which just mm -hmm. takes a unit and then returns whether it passed or failed the check, a help string, the name of the dependency, and whether it's required or not. Yeah. The only dependency that's not required is Git. Um, again, I like I I don't even know if uh, Create Melange app will ever be ran by anyone that doesn't have Git on their system. But yeah, that would be confusing. You know, sure. Um, then we use a functor to construct dependencies, functor. and the <sighs> unbelievable. All right, the module type that gets passed into our functor is this config. So the config um, has to have a process, which we already looked at our process, right? That's like mm. our abstraction for shelling out to some or creating or spawning a child process, right? So right? It's going to include some process, and then it's also going to need, whether it's required, its input value, and its help string. And then we literally just like abstract over with this make functor, and we get a check function. Um, what's the which what's is the down help a string? Uh, what's that mean? So that will be yeah. If you go look at um, let's see what can we look at. We could look at Node probably. Mm -hmm. Node .ml is probably in there. Or Node underscore js .ml. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have this. You can see where we're using our functor right here, right? So we have this process called version. Yeah. Up above. And then we construct a our node dependency module by passing that right. configuration struct into the make functor. We include the process up above. So that's the thing that's gonna run um, yeah. as our check process. And then our help text is what we're gonna render if it fails. Okay. Got Does it. That so it's sense? basically just a failure message. Yeah. So it's basically, you know, like the help text for each of the um, dependencies is basically like just how to install the dependency. And if that ever happens, we're like, hey, please just install this and try running the app again. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. Um, um, cool. I have uh, probably like 10, 15 is... minutes. Um, what do you think's the best use of our time? How much time do you have left? Like 
10, 15 minutes. So the next most important thing to look at would definitely be the scaffold module. Okay. This is going to feel a lot like the wizard one. And this is basically where we're going to step through each step of building out um, the new project or the, the like the project for the user. Forgot to put it on source. There it is. And in it. Okay. Yep. So in it scaffold. Okay. So I have a comment at the top. Four minute TV rewrite. This file is a great example of do as I say, not as I do. It's a mess and I just brute force it to work. Same thing as I said earlier, right? But our type step is going to be the same as we saw in the wizard, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a OCaml module, or I guess in this case, a reason module for each of these stages. And in each of those components or modules, we're going to run an effect that calls the engine. The engine is going to shell out to some process. We're going to wait for a result, pipe it back into the component. Is it an error? Is it good? Send it to the top level scaffold thing. If it's good, on to the next step. Like that's the entire process. Got it. Um, and we have three kind of like groups of, or I guess more than three, I guess we have like seven kind of logical groups okay. um, of steps. If you scroll up a little bit. Up. Yeah, sure. I have comments in the step type. So like step one is creating the project, right? We're going to create the directory and we're going to copy the base templates. Um, all of the templates are in source slash templates and there will be mm. a base directory and there will also be an extensions directory. Not super important right now other than the fact that the based on the configuration object that we build up, the engine will choose where to copy files from out of like the extensions directory. So like if we choose to use V, it's going to go copy files out of uh, templates slash extensions slash V rather than slash webpack. Mm. That's kind of how that's set up. So step one, create the project, copy over the base things. Next is, are we using V or are we using webpack? We're going to copy over the files, and then we're going to extend uh, the package JSON. So we also have this concept of templates. Um, templates are going to work similarly to like dependencies or processes. Um, not very complicated. It's going to have some interface it has to use, and then we can like extend it, or we can compile it, um, okay. which you'll see in some of these steps. So we um, copy bundler files, and then we add things, or we update the package JSON. Next is initializing, initializing the app files. This is going to be like, are we, um, are we using OCaml, or are we using ReasonML as the syntax preference? So I have four basic, I have like four app directories that we can copy from. I have um, Reason, OCaml. And then I have React Reason and React OCaml. So those are like the four things. And during this step, we copy one of those four directories over to the new project. We um, extend the package JSON with dependencies. Like uh, in this case, it'll be like, is it a React app or not? If it's a React app, we add the React dependencies to the package JSON. And then we also extend the Dune project file, which is where we'll install like, um, the reason react ppx and reason react so we can like bind to react in there hmm. the next step is compiling the templates um really there's going to be a type in here called state um we have our templates on that state object and we literally just call template compile and pass that to it so if you just like grep for type state in here state So this is our state object during um, scaffolding. And we essentially create an empty version of this at the very when this component first renders. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll pass our configuration object down in. And then we create an empty template for package JSON, our Dune project, our root Dune file, our app Dune file, the app module, and the readme. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we hit the compile step, and these have all been extended and populated with values, we just compile them, and that pipes it through handlebars. I don't know uh, if there is a um, handlebars package for OCaml. I know that um, 
there is a templating library called Liquid, which is from Shopify. Um, so we might just have to switch our, our templating library um, as part of this as well. I'm not really sure yet, but. Okay. And that's just yeah, you otherwise like the pattern is. DHH and Rails, and that's why you're choosing Shopify tech, obviously. Um, what did you say? Rails I didn't joke. hear you. No, it was, it was oh. just a Rails joke about Shopify. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Amit has a question. Is there an optimizer for optimizing the React components or JS? Um, no. I mean, the Melange compiler is very efficient at compiling JavaScript. Like, it compiles to pretty fast and idiomatic JavaScript. But there is a tool the React team is working on called React Forget that you could end up piping your React through, which will eventually like take care of all this memoization for you, but that's like not really relevant to this. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, like the pattern so this in this the... file, this file is huge. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just thinking through it. Um, okay. Yeah, I boy. think it's just going to be a matter of, of course, like taking time to read more code and see how. So I'll it all probably take some time together. this weekend to start writing out some initial tickets for yeah, issues on GitHub for the Minty refactor and getting just some like high level things together. But mm. um, like, I think we should probably just tackle it. Like, I need to take some time to understand Minty a little bit better and the Elm architecture. I think I coded relatively close that pattern. Like it should translate pretty easily. Yeah. Um, but like we should probably tackle like, you know, M check first. Get that in, get it working. Good. Next, do the wizard part. Get that in, get it good. And then scaffold. Or like those would be three distinct pieces that we either could work on serially or split up for different people to work on. Mm. Um, just stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, let's see. Amit says, is it emitting React components or vanilla JS? I'm guessing you're talking about like the React code here in Create Melange app, in which case yeah, so I'll let Dylan answer. Melange that. will use the Reason React PPX, which is like OCaml's uh, macro system. It'll compile these React components to the exact same uh, JavaScript code that normal JSX would compile to. Like if you compile JSX with um, the TypeScript compiler or with V or whatever you choose to compile your JSX with, Melange is going to output the same exact code. Like this will compile it to the same stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um. Okay, sweet. Well, this was uh, super helpful, dude. I appreciate your time. Uh, yeah. I think that helps. Is there any, I have like, you know, five minutes or so, but is there anything else besides the scaffold that you think is important? Probably not. It's like, like I said, okay. it's really just like dependency check or it's like M check wizard scaffold. And the pattern is almost the same for all three of those things where it's just a like, like linear list of components that hit an effect, shell out somewhere, wait for the result, pipe it back up, next component if it was successful. It's it's that's the entire app. Cool. So like if you can understand that, you can pretty much follow the code anywhere. I don't have anything clever. Like the most clever stuff I have is the dependencies where I'm passing around first class modules. Um, but even then that shouldn't be too difficult to follow um yeah hopefully it's pretty straightforward to uh translate yeah no i think this helps it. because you know as you know i haven't touched javascript in a long time and so i don't have like a very clear understanding of some of those things and uh i think this just helps me put it all together um yeah so amit uh it uses a a i guess framework i guess you could call it called ink which basically takes React components and then renders them for the terminal. Um, so that's how 
So it doesn't. So, I mean, you know, I don't it know. It still uses React's reconciler, but rather than rendering to the DOM, uh, it still has a, a virtual DOM, right? But right. that rather than map. Oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> Rather than <laughs> rendering to a DOM, Inc. wrote a custom renderer to take the virtual DOM and render it to terminal output. Right. So, I mean, essentially what we're trying to do here is we're getting rid of all of the React components like in this yep. project, right? Like, yep. And so, so from an end user perspective, the fact that we're using React in this project does not matter to them. Uh, right. And of course they might be writing react components, but like this tool has nothing to do with optimizing those react components. It's just about scaffolding their project for them so that they can easily get started with a melange app. Yep. Exactly. Sick. Um, balloons for everyone. That's right. What a, what a party we just had. What an absolute party um that's really funny awesome well cool yeah uh i think this will help me get started uh more quickly i appreciate the time uh the idea at this point i think we're all still good for it is that on sunday at 5 p.m eastern we're going to be doing nicks at night uh it's going to be on dylan's channel so make sure you follow him if you don't already let me give him a shout out real quick and we get to become uh, even more insufferable than we already are by that's right and yeah Nick's we're people. we're just absolutely bringing if if functional programming and uh me doing a few a few times of proof theorems were were not enough for you uh we're now going to start being uh we're going to start shilling nicks so if <laughs> i mean how how much better can this get right so uh i don't think it could get much better after we become these <laughs> people i think i think that's where we peak <laughs> it's so so true um awesome well if you want to hang out with us on discord that's the discord uh I, it's not even working for some reason there we go nightbot finally figured it out and uh if you want to follow me on twitter there it is and this will eventually go on youtube um <laughs> which is just going to be a whole vod of me absolutely stumbling <laughs> over how to import your video but that's fine that's that's basically what this stream is anyway it's me just fumbling over whatever i happen to be doing um so i'm gonna stop stop youtube now by youtube like and subscribe you know Get, get me all those likes, all those subscribes. Re watch my common list videos. Come on, 